Welcome to the countryside of Wales. Roads like this one made up a significant portion of my commutes to and from work back when I lived on my first canal boat, and in that area I didn't own a car so I was travelling these roads predominantly by bike, and as much as we can enjoy the peaceful beauty and rustic simplicity of a road that's as much grass as it is tarmac, here under a traditional British grey summer sky, you can probably imagine that when you're pedalling a bike down a road like this in the middle of a long, wet, dark winter season, with the farm vehicles dragging mud in and out of the fields too, as a bonus element for when you get back and hang your muddy clothes up in front of the fire on the boat, it's uh, maybe slightly less idyllic in those conditions. However, just the memory alone of those imperfect moments helped to make the times that I would be in places like this under a beautiful summer sunset at the end of a long day all the more sweet to experience. This road is going to lead us to a canal bridge by the end of the video, and there's a grey boat moored up by it. Don't get excited, it's not my boat unfortunately, I still haven't found the next boat to live on. But as I walked past the boat I said hello to the chap who I think lives on it, and I just thought to myself as I was heading towards a heron encounter on the towpath, that this is, this is it, this is life, and although I haven't got a boat myself at the moment to be spending quite as much time out here as I want, I'm still coming to the canal multiple times a week and trying to get into these sort of hidden, almost forgotten nooks and crannies that surround these rural segments of canal. I think the fact that we've now walked for so long with this incredible grass tuft that runs perfectly symmetrically down the centre of this road is an indicator as to how little traffic this gets. And that's a thought that I've often had and often sort of mused on in years gone by when I've been pedalling up and down at all hours of the morning, noon and night, that I wonder how many other people have come down this road in this week, today, this month, and I often think that I must surely sometimes be the only person who's stepped foot on some of these roads in a day or two. And even if that is the case, and obviously this is not a very busy road at all, I love the idea that depending on what sort of journey you're doing, you can literally be travelling on a four-lane motorway with four lanes of traffic going in either direction and then slowly get onto smaller and smaller roads until you're travelling on a road like this that's barely one lane wide heading up into the Welsh hills. And that's something that, again, perhaps it's just my rural country bumpkin simple uh, leave me alone I'm scared of the modern world mindset but there's something nice about that thought there's something pleasant about the fact that these places exist and as I say there's somebody moored up on a boat in fact you can see the boat on screen now just that little grey oblong shape to the right hand side there's somebody living at the bottom of this road and then if we were to follow this road over the canal bridge and down the hill, we'd find it would join up to a similarly rural road with what I can only describe as some of the poshest houses in this region on it. And I'm not going to take you all the way down there, don't worry, because firstly I feel like I should put on a shirt and tie before I go around that part, and secondly because I'm not going to be some weirdo standing outside someone's house with a camera. But... Like I say, I just love the thought that this is still an active part of the travel network. And for some people, such as myself and some of the people who live out in these rural places, and of course, many of my fellow boaters, this is the beginning and the end of the travel network usage for the day. As somebody who has grown up and always lived around roads like this, I've often found it quite interesting to see some people's reactions to them when I've posted clips of places like this online previously, where people will often have the question, for example, of 
what on earth do you do if you're in a car and you meet a car coming in the opposite direction? And as you can see, there is very little that you can do other than decide which one of you is going to reverse to the nearest little lay-by or passing point. And you can see here just on the left of the road as we approach it, there's this little grassy area which you would have to reverse up to and let the other car pass. But I'll say that on some of the roads, and maybe even this road, in the middle of winter, you can imagine how mushy some of these uh, lay-by areas get. And my girlfriend actually dropped her wheel into, I don't know if you'd describe it as a, a little drainage gully that was carved out at the side of one of these lanes once when she was uh, leaving from visiting me on my boat. So yeah, there's, um, there's certainly some fun and games associated with travelling these roads sometimes. And I think it's one of those things that you just have to accept as part of rural country life. So we're really getting close to the canal now. And just think, I've been filming this shot continuously from my phone held at head height with the fisheye lens on so that you're getting to see a little bit more of the surroundings as we're walking down here. And we've not seen a single person, we've not even really been aware of the existence of humanity other than seeing that boat moored up that's just to the left of the bridge as we approach from this side. And that's what I say and what I love about these sort of places, that you can be here on a, not necessarily a beautiful summer's day, but certainly a, a nice dry, mild summer's day and so close to a fantastic feature as the canal as we are, because nobody's really got much of a reason to go up and down these lanes, it's possible sometimes to travel for miles and not bump into another person, whether that's by boot, bike or by car. There it is, the wonderful canal that is filled, and this is going to be a terribly soppy thing to say. Not only is it filled with water, but it's filled with many fantastic memories for me. <laughs> so here's our little sign, and the road in the background is going to disappear downhill and join the, the little posh area down there. But that's not a place for me. So I'm going to get back onto the canal towpath here. And I suppose this is a place for me to really wrap this video up and once again try and make this pay for itself and start plugging my boat life books. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this and you want to learn more or help me out, please do check the links in the description and search Amazon as well for The Narrowboat Lad and you'll find myself and my little books that I've written about my time living on a canal boat. Thank you so much for joining me for this lovely little walk. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time my friends, keep it interesting, keep it boat worthy, keep it boot worthy, have a fantastic day and of course, farewell. <laughs>